In this video, we will see how we can import a 3D card object inside my AR Studio, and we're going to use Cinema 4D to investigate the model and manage the number of polygons or the subdivisions. And then also, we will see how we can apply materials or we can use the materials that come with the object. So, I'm going to open Cinema 4D, and you can import many different formats in Cinema 4D. You can model your product directly in here but in this case we're going to go into file and we're going to go to open to open an existing project an existing file and this is the file that we're gonna use also in this example so in my case i have it in the download and it's this one here is called the fryer stp so it's a card object it's a card format you can also try with other types and with other formats. So I'm gonna open and this is gonna be the, the panel that we're gonna encounter at first. So um, you can use the default. You can also customize this and if you want you can save your presets right here. Now there are no presets available up here at the top so we're gonna go for the default and let's go down here. Now the most important thing is the tessellation. Tessellation is really important because you need to decide how many polygons you want to generate uh, when you convert this into something readable by, by Cinema 4D. So if you're using polygonal modeling software, they're all gonna be uh, working with meshes, but sometimes the, the software needs to do a conversion of mesh or uh, either is going to increase or decrease the number of segments, the number of faces or polygons and that's going to be the tessellation right here. So we can use the source mesh or we can use some specific detailing. So you can use a custom detailing. So you, you need to choose how many uh, steps you want your curves to be made of. So you can uh, decrease these values if you want more quality. And if you keep this at zero, this means that it will not affect this conversion. Otherwise, you can use these presets down here. This is the high quality or high poly, medium or low. Now let's start with a low value and I'm going to go with OK. And there you go. So we can see we have the object inside. We need to do some adjustments, but you can see quickly that here we don't have enough segments and the object looks too low poly and faceted. So we need to make this smoother and we need to have a nice curved surface here for this cylinder. Well, uh, this is not good enough probably. Now in this other scene, I've imported the same exact object but using different settings in the moment of the import. So this is the low quality. And then we have medium, so we have an increase of segments and increase of subdivisions and increase of faces and of the structure here of the polygons of the model but also we have an increase of quality and this is the high version so if i go in the four views here and look closer we can see that well here is still visible uh, that it's a little bit too segmented and faceted if we go to the high version, high poly version, we can see that those cylinders looks really well. So probably we, we're going to go with the high most of the time because it's going to give us the best results. But be careful, don't exaggerate with the number of polygons. This number here represents the number of polygons. So uh, let me close this. And also I want to delete the previous import and I want to import again using the high quality settings. So I'm going to go to file, open and select the same exact file. And now what I'm going to do is use the high quality. You can also study this further if you're interested. These are more technical settings, but basically if you lower down, for example, the max angle of the degrees here, I can put five. Well, that's going to be even more uh, detail. If you put here one millimeter, this is going to be the max length for the segments that are going to be generated. So 
uh, you are basically increasing it more and more the quality of the tessellation. So probably this could become too heavy. So let's keep this too high with the presets and let's bring back this to the original and say OK. So now we should see a nice object with nice curved surface right here, especially. And we're ready to go. Now, if you want to investigate the polygons in the scene, how many polygons you have there, you can click on with the right click, selecting an object. You can check the object information. So these are the polygons of that specific object. If you want, you can also click here and select the, the old scene or everything that it's a part of the object, all the elements, and right click and there you go. We can see all the elements all together. You can also use the scene information or press the Ctrl plus I on your keyboard. Okay, now that we know that we have adjusted the problems with the faceted cylinders and the softness of the overall object, we can start to manage the position. So we need to push this up. Be careful to select everything concerning the object, not just one piece. And if I switch to the four view, I can position this approximately to the ground like that. And be careful to position it on the origin of the axis. So it needs to be at the exact center of the scene. We don't need to rotate it. We can scale it. We need to check on its uh, dimensions. So we're going to go to Window, Coordinate Manager, or Shift plus Examine. And here, we can go to the size. So if you go to Size Plus, we can see that maybe this is too small. Well, it actually is, because we need to convert inches into centimeters. So I'm going to go here and use the scale and put 2.54, 2.54, and 2.54. You can also copy this value, Ctrl C and paste it, Ctrl B. There you go. So this is now scaled uniformly and it's not stretched or uh, any way deformed. The only thing we need to adjust again is the position because now we went too low, we want to put this just right above the work plane here. Now, if you want, again, you can increase the number of polygons even more and make it even more detailed, but be careful because this is going to go on a mobile. So uh, the upload and download and the various operation could be really slow. So uh, you don't need to increase too much the number of polygons. If you want to check the wireframe, you can do it also from here. Just switch to either lines or wireframe. And remember that suggested limit will be 100,000 polygons and 5 megabytes for the file size. Now I'm going to go back here with one view and back to the original Guru shading because we're going to work now with the materials. We address the part concerning the 3D object, the mesh, and the polygons. Now we're going to move into the materials. So I'm going to open up the asset browser. And this is where you can get a lot of assets. And if we click on materials, Cinema 4D will give us a lot of materials that are ready made for us. And this is going to be used right now. And um, I'm going to go into plastic. So double click on the folder. We can change visualization so we can see a little bit better. Now be careful because none of these uh, materials will be compatible with my AR Studio. So I'm going to go for this plastic glossy first. I'm going to apply it to the first element and that's fine. Now instead of clicking and dragging to the next one, next element, I need to reuse the same one that I've used before. So if you're not applying a new material, instead of clicking, dragging and dropping, you can go here and open up the Material Manager and from the Material Manager I can click and drag. So this way I'm going to use the same material and not create a new Material instance every time that I drop this inside the scene. There you go. Now if you want, 
you can also substitute a material that you don't want anymore. So let's say that I want to use here some plastic old rough or something like that. I'm going to click and drag and there you go. So I have substitute the previous material. Now we need to make sure that the materials that we use are uh, made of uh, actual texture. So if I look for here, plastic old, I can see all the materials available, but also that they're using actual texture made of pixels in JPEG format. They're not using procedural texture. So we need to use actual pixel texture. You can also apply more materials. Just be careful to remove them when you continue to apply more than one material. They're going to be overlapping, so you can remove them from the objects panel right here. If you want to apply a material on more than one element, you can also select holding the shift key. You can do a multiple selection. You can move around, go to the bottom. You can use the four views to be more precise and just navigate around. And let's just now apply another plastic material to the overall selection here. So I'm going to go for plastic gloss white, click and drag, and there you go. So you can see it's applied to all the parts that I have selected. I also want to apply it right here. So again, don't use this one here, just use this the one that you already applied. And this is also a, a default material, like a standard material that has been imported by the original object. We don't really need that anymore, so we can delete it from here. We can also delete it from here if you want. Okay, now we can export this in GLB file and import it in my AR Studio. So I'm going to go to File, Export, and let's go to GLTF GLB. We click on the little engine icon. Make sure you have selected GLB, not GLTF. And about the materials, the important thing is the textures. So we are actually exporting textures. We need to define the width and height. The suggested uh, dimension is um, 1024 times 1024 or 2048, 2048. We can use this don't enlarge. We can also resize them if we want. The cut. There you go. And I'm going to open it into my AR Studio. So I'm going to open up the website. I'm going to access my area, my cloud into my AR Studio. I'm going to click on the plus button here and I can either click in the middle here or just drag and drop. So I will take the 3D object. Be careful that this needs to be the, the format that we export this so with GLB. And also this is the STP, so don't confuse the two. Click and drag and there we go. So now we have the 3D model ready to be used in my AR Studio. So we start with uh, generating a poster here, save and publish, and prepare it for uh, the augmented reality visualization, which is explained and shown in another video. So this is the QR code. You can proceed from here. And we can check if all the materials and all the meshes are looking good before we actually go and publish it and share it and so on. Thank you for watching this video tutorial and I remind you to subscribe to the channel so to stay updated and to follow on any news and please check also our other videos for more information about my AR Studio.